Welcome to, State, to Something Artsy. This is our spring edition of it. I'm Brenda Nielsen, and I have been on the board at State Street Theater, and also been doing theater in our community for the last mm, probably 35 years. I'm really excited today that we have um, some guests with us, and my first guest today is Lisa Besmer. She's on the board of State Street Theater. And it's, Welcome. Thank you. I'm so glad that yes. you're here. Why Thank don't you, you let me know what's going on at State Street? Well, I am one of the newest board members at State Street Theater, and I was telling Brenda beforehand, I have absolutely no kind of talent whatsoever, but I think giving back to the community is so important, so being on the board is one way for me to, to do this. And so we've got fun things going on. Um, one of the things that they're working on, uh, and we'll go over some plays in a little bit, but the Glatzbach Gallery is really mm -hmm. coming together, and that's going to be really neat. It's got pictures from, even from Turner Hall and the plays and the operas that were done there at the time, and then all the way through when the school was being built and the WPA project that Blinus Glatzbach was involved in. So it's, it's going to be pictures along the hallway. Um, if you remember the junior high school, if you were like me and were lucky enough to go there, it's in the hallway by like going towards the locker rooms mm -hmm. in that long hallway. It's beautiful. It is. It is and great. it's going to be even better when, when they cleaned out the school, when the State Street Theater Board, maybe you were involved in this too, Brenda, when they were cleaning out different areas, they found all the globe pendants on the, for the lights mm -hmm. that go along the hallway. And if you really look at, when you go to the State Street Theater next, which we welcome you to come, if you really look at the hallways, the architecture is so neat. And what they plan on doing in the Glatzbach um, hallway is to open that false ceiling back up again mm -hmm. and hang all the pendants that are original to the school, and that'll be really, really neat. So, but I, and I, I love history, so that'll yeah. be wonderful. But there's a lot of fun things going on, and you know, right now we we still have with the COVID, we still have a max amount of people that can come into the theater, but we've got some great things going on, and maybe with our COVID numbers, numbers decreasing, we'll be able to increase the amount of people that can come into the productions. But the first thing we've got going on is on Sunday, March 14th, they, it's a radio show, it's a virtual radio mm -hmm. show, and it's called My Favorite Husband Dinner for 12. And it's basically um, from the early TV mega hit, I Love Lucy. And many of these Lucille Ball mm -hmm. starred radio show scripts served as um, the genesis of the later TV episodes. And Brenda, you're involved sure, in that also. Sure, I have a little a little part. I'm the maid, and yes, the the um, the language is just great. It's just pure Lucy. Oh, fun! So fun. Yeah. And the show will be available through a donation through our link on Facebook and our Facebook page. And if you haven't liked us on Facebook, you have to do that because not only mm -hmm. does it have upcoming events, but when you if you want to participate and be an actor or or anything it's there's something always on there also about that so it's state street new alm and our website is statestreetnewalm.org the next fun thing that was scheduled for last fall and we got we moved it up to this actually it'll be friday through sunday april 16th through the 18th is charlotte's web and i didn't realize but the children's Liter literature association named charlotte's web the best American children's book of the past 200 years. Mm -hmm. So we're lucky enough to be able to be part of that. Um, tickets are on sale now already. You can go to the Chamber of Commerce or Hy-Vee, um, or you can go right onto our website and you can order tickets right now online. And again, if you had tickets in the fall, those will still be good. Um, but if you want to go, make sure you get some tickets soon uh, because... Uh, Again, there's a limited capacity. And the tickets are, let me just look here, it is um, advanced tickets are only $5 for students and $10 for adults. So, and you're mm -hmm. really involved in this production, which well, is neat. I am. I've, um, Wendy Tuttle is the director of our show. And Wendy and I have worked together for a long time and I, she directs and I produce. And so we've done a fair number of shows and I've, I've also worked as an actress under Wendy's tutelage. Um, we have a great cast, and it's it's one of those shows that sparkles. And I'll say that just because I'm involved, um, I'm a little bit of, I'm a little critical. <laughs> and, and this one sparkles. Everybody in that show um, is is so committed, and they're all playing many different parts because we because of the virus we 
are tr we're truly trying to keep our cast to a minimum. So I think we're under 12 people oh, in the goodness. cast so that we could keep people distanced. Um, our set is all so that it's completely distanced so no one is, is closer than six feet to the next actor. So um, it, it's exciting. We're, um, we're getting ready to get started on some rehearsals again because, of course, after being off set for the past few months, um, we probably need a little bit of a review. Mm -hmm. so, That's great. Right. That's right. Yeah, it's, it's lucky that we've got so many talented people in our, in our area, and that's, that's very nice. But if you are, if you have some talent, mm -hmm. um, make sure that you do contact um, Carolyn and get on the list for um, actors. And we al always need volunteers. Always, yes, always, always need volunteers to be, um, you know, ushers or cleaning people or uh, bartenders. So make sure that you um, ask to be a volunteer also, because not all of us have any have talent. I was lucky <laughs> enough. My my oldest daughter, she was involved in plays, um, a lot of different plays, and she's got a beautiful singing voice. And my youngest daughter, she's more behind the scenes, mm -hmm. and she she would do a lot of the different things behind the scenes, which is equally as important. Mm -hmm. um, so I just think that, and I just feel like they they had so much fun being involved in something, and mm -hmm. I'm sure you feel that too, is just the involvement with the different people is Absolutely. Just, just worth it. And yeah. and every time every time a new show is out, you, you get to meet somebody new, somebody with um, a whole bunch of, of things that they could do, interests and stuff, and everybody comes with a gift, right. no matter whether exactly. they think they have one or not. So That's right. absolutely. That's right. The next thing that we've got coming up is the Looney Lutherans, mm -hmm. and that's going to be Saturday, May 8th. And the Looney Lutherans will present Youngish at Heart, Celebrating Maturity. <laughs> so, and while getting harder may seem like a, a pain in the neck, um, they really make laughter is really the key here. And um, they, the segments of the, it's going to be a game show. Uh, segments include the game show, What's, show what's in Your Lunchbox, hosted by your favorite luncheon meat, uh, musical advice for dealing with aches and pains, and creative tips for keeping fit, because Jello isn't the only thing that jiggles. So that sounds really, really hilarious. The tickets are going to be advanced, are $8 for students and $12.50 for adults. Again, you can purchase those online already too, or you can go to Hy-Vee or New Elm Chamber of Commerce, and that's going to be Saturday, May 8th at 7 p.m. Have you been to a Looney Lutheran? I have. I actually worked backstage. I, I, I've gone to all the all of the plays when they were up in the cities. Okay. So I remember the 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 one where the the one lady was having um, a more mature um, warmth to her body. You know, <laughs> she was having a good old fashioned hot flash, and she's sitting in the freezer. I, I still remember that as being one of the funniest skits I've I, ever seen. I'm excited for this one. And and the outreach team that comes here is just amazing they are just they're so friendly and they are they can get anybody up on stage oh. and they're just yeah it, it's an enjoyable show yes and maybe by may 8th maybe we'll have restrictions yeah. lifted just a little bit more also so that would be wonderful if we could get more people in um you know during this time of covid of course last year um you know it was just we didn't really hardly have any of the plays or mm -hmm. musicals or music um deals and venues at the at the State Street. So we were lucky enough to have some wonderful donors, some private donors, and also we received grants from New Elm Area Foundation, um, Prairie Lakes Regional Arts Council, and also the Minnesota State Arts Board. Because even though yeah we're not we're, we're not doing anything there, we're still paying for the heat and the electricity and so forth. So um, it's thank you for your donations and if you would like to donate we would truly appreciate it also. We've got a full year coming up with 2021. We, we are booking a lot of different things. So we're just hoping that everything is gonna stay good and healthy. Yeah. Great. Yes, yeah. And I think um, we don't realize how lucky we are. And I, I've talked to several different people about how, how much they miss being able to just go to the State Street Theater for, for a production, mm -hmm. be it music or a play. Um, just because it's another fun thing to do in New Alm. And I'm lucky enough to be able to tour people through New Alm with New Alm Real Estate, mm -hmm. being a real estate agent there. And it's amazing when when we're we're showing people 
and I take them by State Street Theater and I'll tell them about the productions that we've got there and they can't believe that a lot of these are community members that are mm -hmm. doing this. And, and also then, you know, then we have the Grand and we've got so many different wonderful things and it brings so much to New Ulm that I don't think people realize just how lucky we are to have the State Street Theater in our, in our town. I think it's amazing we, the special thanks we have to have for all of those entities within our community yes. that are keeping the arts alive. That's right. That's so right. it's amazing. And I think That's once great. you really look at the Glatzbach Gallery, you'll realize that historically mm -hmm. how much it meant to have arts in our town, you know, with, with the different venues, yeah. both at the Union Hall and, um, and at the Turner Hall, you know, just those different things that were... Sure you know, they felt necessary at that time also, and we want to carry that tradition going forward. Great. Well, Lisa, I'm so glad that you came today. Thank you, Brenda. I know that you have something to go to yes, soon. Yes. So We're bringing another family from, from a different state into New Ulm today, so that's wonderful. Awesome. Yes. Well, thank you so much. It's right, been such you. a joy to have you here. All right. Thanks, Brenda. Thanks. I am Bethel Balke, Artistic Director of Pro Musica Minnesota. And I'm Benji Hineker. I'm the Executive Director of Pro Musica Minnesota. Yeah, and we're here in St. Paul's Lutheran Church, uh, which is going to be our venue for the season um, for our next upcoming concerts. So it's a beautiful space, beautiful piano. We're looking forward to playing here. It is nice live space and um, uh, just a really uh, lovely change of scenery for us, but we're looking forward to exploring the new space, and um, we've got some really exciting concerts to invite in here, too. Right, right. So I wanted to touch briefly on these concerts. Uh, first one coming up on April 11th, um, and this is going to be uh, a trio, actually uh, four people performing, because it's uh, myself on piano, we have Peter McGuire on violin, uh, Return of Silver Ainomai uh, on cello, and we also have Catherine Worcester, who is a local soprano phenomenal singer um, and of course Peter and Silver are both connected uh, as principal players with the Minnesota Orchestra. And then we have another concert coming up after that on uh, May 3rd. Yeah, May 2nd. Oh, May 2nd, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> so May 2nd, right. So they're, uh, they're both on Sundays and on May 2nd we have uh, Peter McGuire on violin, uh, Richard Belcher who is a cellist with the uh, SPC or St. Paul Chamber Orchestra and myself doing some piano trios. And it's uh, going to be a very busy spring uh, for us here. So we have those concerts, and then immediately following after that in Mankato, we have the uh, Pro Musica Chamber Music Festival that'll be hosted at Trinity Chapel in Mankato. And so um, we're looking forward to producing uh, four concerts in a week's time uh, during that festival as well. Yeah, so a lot of exciting events coming. It's kind of a compressed season. Uh, due in part to COVID, but uh, a lot of exciting things. Something happening every month, mm -hmm. April, May, June. So if you're in the area, um, I mean, we're, uh, this is the, the most professional of professional concerts. And so if you can come and uh, check us out, if you're a classical music fan or just kind of want to um, seek something different and see kind of like the a really high level of uh, performance of chamber music, we would love to have see you at any or all of our concerts coming up. If you're interested in purchasing tickets or finding out any information about our concerts, please visit our website, promusicamn.org. Thank you very much. Hi there. We're back at um, Something Artsy, and this is Brendan Nielsen here, and I have my new guest, my second guest today, and it's Ann Makepeace. And, well, Ann and I worked together when we were in our other, our other roles. Lives. Lives, <laughs> our other lives. lives. And so now she's, she's coming to us with the grand, and I'm, I know that we've heard from Ann before, and she's always got so much going on for the grand. So let me know, Ann, what okay. you got going. Okay. Well, um, we are doing quite a bit that's virtual right now. Uh, we have had a couple of virtual um, shows in the cabaret, uh, which are all broadcast on YouTube live. And we've been having mm -hmm. some help from New Cat, from somebody who works at New Cat, making sure the sound is good, uh, making sure it all works. And it's been going great. Uh, we've got two coming up in March, pretty much every other week. So Easy Jazz Trio is the first one on March 12th. This is a Friday. Um, Easy Jazz Trio is Eric Zimmerman and several other jazz musicians, and they're fabulous. They're from Mankato. 
Uh, they played at the Grand a number of times, but they're really excited because they haven't had a gig in so long with COVID. Um, so they're so excited to do this virtual thing. So tune into that one. We try to have jazz periodically and um, probably haven't had as much of it lately, but these guys are really high class. Uh, and then March 26, two Fridays later, we have Tim Babel. And I think everybody knows Tim Babel. Uh, but Tim is kind of, you know, he's a little bit of a rock on tour. He'll tell a few stories. He'll sing some folk and some other kinds of music, rock music, um, and it'll be fun. These are both um, virtuals. Um, and I guess we labeled Tim as classic rock. So anyway. He's classic. Yeah, classic. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. classic. Right. Yeah. So the other virtual thing we're doing is we are having some virtual classes. We had a Valentine's class in mm. February uh, with card, basically card folding with Beth Sleta. Uh, we did have one scheduled in March, but we've now moved that, and it's going to be in April. So we can mm -hmm. talk about that at your next show. But that's going to feature somebody named Mary Bruno, um, who was on the cover of Minneapolis St. Paul magazine with one of her um, letterpress um, pieces in the last month. So she's kind of a big deal. And she's going to do something um, really special, a reduction block print. Um, so you'll sign up, you'll watch it online, you'll end up with a Mary Bruno print in the end. So that's cool. So that's our virtual stuff. And we did get a grant from the Minnesota State Arts Board that is helping us pay for these. Because they want artists, uh, groups around the state, to figure out what to do with the virtual piece. And how do we keep the arts in people's homes and alive during all of this. Um, so we're happy. We're lucky we got that grant. Uh, we also have grants from Prairie Lake Regional Arts Council, and they fund our live music and other things, and our museum, our smallest museum, uh, which we have Clay Schult has a, a card deck exhibit that will be open by the time the show airs. Um, it's historic cards. Uh, it will be in that little museum outside the front of the Grand. You can see it 24-7. Um, and it's, it's really kind of cool. It's a really cool collection of cards. Uh, that Clay had and was interested in exhibiting. Uh, so we have the smallest museum. This is our fourth exhibit. They're every two months, so they're outside for a full two months. So that'll, that'll be open in March and April. And then the Four Pillars Gallery, um, we have a new show with two young artists. One is Sam Matter, who has had uh, exhibits with us before. And then the other person is Caitlin Lang. And Caitlin Lang um, has never had an exhibit that I know of. Um, she's a really, she does, she paints on vinyl records. Uh, she does block printing. Um, and so we paired the two of them because there's some, some similarities between their work. Um, and that's pretty exciting. They're both really excited about that. Opens up March 5th and goes till April 2nd. So those are awesome. the things that are going on in the Grand, virtual and non. Um, you can come in person to the exhibit. Uh, we haven't had any issue uh, with too many people coming at one time. If we had an influx of 10 people, we would have somebody wait outside. So we're careful about COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also doing virtual filming of every exhibit. So you can go to our website and you'll be able to see actually a, a, literally a slideshow of the exhibit and see each piece individually. Uh, so we've been doing that now for almost a year. Um, and then the only other piece of news is that I am retiring. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to focus on volunteering in Cellar Press. Uh, and I have both the replacement, my replacement is the incoming executive director. His name is Charlie Leftridge. Uh, and he uh, comes to us from the Mankato Symphony Orchestra. Uh, so he was the operations manager over there. He's got a nonprofit background. Uh, he has a master's in music. So he's already booking all of our live music. Um, but he's very adept, you know, in the whole nonprofit world. Uh, and then we also have Tamara Firth as our marketing and communications manager, and she's doing a lot of our social media. She has a teaching background, so she's going to work with our summer arts camps, um, with youth arts camps mm -hmm. that we have yeah. coming up. So, so fun. And um, that is something I should mention. By the end of March, uh, you will see um, more information about we're going to have three youth arts camps again this summer. We did three last summer two weeks apart, and we're going to spread them out a month apart this time because it was rather intense because we're, we're <laughs> well, it's not the kids. It was the 10 kids at one door, 10 kids at the other, making sure nobody, we're going to do the same thing this year with the COVID precautions. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but we're going to do a June camp for creativity, uh, a summer um, July camp that'll be international language and culture, and then we'll do another creativity camp um, in August. Well, we can talk more about wow. that later, but yeah, lots going on. 
<laughs> how amazing, you know, how amazing in a time when arts have been felt like they have been totally yeah. shut down. They're not. They're still no. We, still a lot in alive. fact, we've been busier in lots of ways than we ever have before. Yeah. I mean, everything that we do takes a. You just have to do a lot more kind of machinations to make it safe, make it work, um, get the word out, especially with virtuals when people aren't all that, everybody isn't comfortable right, with it. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. But we're happy. It's been going well. It's, and I'm going to work in Cellar Press, which is our letterpress and printmaking studio. And we have actually 11 presses now. We have, we're going to have, we're going to have 11. We're adding a second Vandercook, which is kind of the state of the art arts press and they're Hard to find, um, but they're wonderful presses. Mm -hmm. They work both for type and for linoleum block carving. And so we're going to, once we can open to have live classes again, um, we're really going to concentrate on more in our letterpress and printmaking studio. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know I'm going to sign up when you do yeah. linoleums again because I just thought, oh, there'd be so much fun to learn some of that. Yeah. I haven't done it since I was in grade school. I think we did some. And yeah, and we, awesome. uh, we did a calendar this year. We still have some in our gift okay. shop. Um, we're going to lower the price from 20 to 15 but we had 13 artists carve linoleum blocks, and then they're mm -hmm. printed on this beautiful <laughs> handmade calendar, um, and we're going to do it again next year. So if you're an artist and you want to carve a linoleum block, just contact the oh, grant because we have a few more to give out. So. Well, Anne, thank you so much. <laughs> you know, the, yeah. the grant is going to miss you in its current role, but I... I'm excited for you yeah. to retire. You know, it's not a bad, it's not a bad gig. No. It really isn't. And it sounds like I'm you excited. have wonderful people yep. that are stepping in. Do. To, to, yeah. to I feel really good about the grand right now, where awesome. I'm leaving it, in whose hands I'm leaving it, and how good. it's going to be going forward. Oh, so good. Well, yeah. Thank you so yeah. much, Anne. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Nice to see you again. Hello, my name is Haley Martin and I'm a sophomore at Martin Luther College, the college up on the hill. <laughs> oh, and I'm Emma Dorn. I'm a junior at Martin Luther College and I'm the director of this show, Jack and the Beanstalk. And it's been so much fun with such a great group of people putting this all together, working really hard. Um, pretty much my role um, in putting this whole thing together is I'm going to be, I mean, I'm leading the rehearsals and I, I'm the go-between in between all the crews, the production crews and the cast and really everyone is working really hard to bring my vision to life and they're doing such a great job at it so it's really exciting. And the show itself is a lot like the original Jack and the Beanstalk but like like, it's pretty much just the characters that are the same. There are definitely twists to it that are really exciting. And the cow, you know, that Jack needs to sell for money, that character is such a blast. She sings and her voice is beautiful. And when she sings, sometimes I don't want her to stop. <laughs> and there, th there's a hen in it and she cracks some really funny jokes. And it's also a really inspiring show that might give you goosebumps. <laughs> Anyways, that's the, the Jack and the Beanstalk that's going to be really exciting. I am the producer, so I work on PR and doing stuff like this to get our show out into the public so that everyone can, who wants to see it can come and see it. This year, due to COVID restriction and, ML, and MLC's um, guidelines, we aren't able to have everyone come on campus like we would in past years. But the cool thing about this production is that it will be live streamed. So you can watch the live stream either March 12th or 13th. On the 12th, it's at 8 p.m. and on the 13th, it's at 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. If you're interested in watching the show on the live stream, you can go to mlc-wells.edu to find out more information all about that. It's definitely a show that you and your kids are gonna wanna see. We're back to something artsy, and I'm here with my third um, guest of the day. This is Leroy mm -hmm. Noster Tanner. Did I say that correctly? You got it pretty close. Okay, well, great. <laughs> and he's from the library here, and he's got some things to tell us about. And um, I just 
this is the first time we've met, and um, yeah. I think you've been doing some great work. So We're trying. <laughs> you really are. So let me know what's, what's going on, Leroy. Sure. Uh, well, with the uh, COVID restrictions, we still have quite a bit of virtual programming mm -hmm. and things going on in that regard. Uh, you may have uh, seen our Facebook page or our YouTube channel. Uh, you're welcome to check both of those out. Um, but you also may have noticed, um, many of our patrons have, that uh, the city has a new website, uh, which has caused some confusion for people, which means we also have a new web page on the website. But the address is still the same. It's still www.newolmlibrary.org. Okay. Um, but uh, the visuals are a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to be working on putting up uh, some revised tutorial tutorials on our YouTube channel as far as how to navigate to find things. Uh, but I'm working as much as I can to make it as easy a process for people to find what they're looking for on there. Great. Um, but you can access our calendar event, of events. It is up and running. Okay. Uh, and so we have a, a number of things coming up here. Um, so uh, still having our virtual story times, and those mm -hmm. get posted on Facebook and YouTube at the same time. Um, we're doing them once a week uh, at this point in time. And so you'll see them when they drop. Sure. <laughs> um, and, and Ms. Catherine, our Youth Life Services Librarian, does a great job with those. Um, the monthly Teen Talks uh, book club is still meeting virtually for, for teens with uh, Ms. Catherine and Ms. Amy. Uh, and then they have a, a couple. Ms. Catherine has also been putting together a lot of uh, STEM tutorials. So STEM, science, mm -hmm. technology, engineering, and math. Yeah. Uh, and so a lot of fun activities with easy to find materials uh, that you can do at home, but uh, we've also been putting kits together so you know, parents or children can come to the children's uh, room and, and pick those up mm -hmm. and then uh, do it along with Ms. Castron when the tutorial mm -hmm. appears. Uh, so the next one is a roots and, roots and Shoots tutorial for growing things. And so you can come and pick up a kit uh, in the um, in the children's room for that. Good. Uh, we've got uh, our uh, Wanda Gog celebration for her birthday coming up in March. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's going to uh, be a, a special story time uh, and celebration on Saturday, March 13th. Um, story time this coming Monday is uh, uh, in celebration of Dr. Seuss's birthday. And so yeah. there will be some fun things with that. And then every month on the third Thursday is our uh, Lego challenge. Um, you know, kids loved doing it when they could be in the children's room and we had the Legos out. All of those have been put away for the moment with COVID restrictions. So, um, but Ms. Amy does a great job of putting together uh, a virtual challenge and, and we hope that uh, kids enjoy putting those together and, and sharing them with us. And then at the uh, end of March, the next uh, STEM tutorial is gonna be about butterflies. Yeah. So on uh, the adult side of things, we're, we're very pleased to announce that our book discussions are going to be able to meet in person again. So we've been doing virtual for the most part over the past year. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, the History Book Club will be having their meeting uh, up in our Fred Johnson room, of course, still masked and socially distanced. Sure. Uh, and the Mystery Book Club will meet down here um, in the later part of the month. And of course, it is tax season as well. And so... Uh, United Way is still going to be doing their, their tax preparation services available. Um, they'll be down here in the meeting room, and we have their uh, intake forms and information to make appointments upstairs at the circulation desk. Oh, so many things going on. <laughs> well, great. That was, that's awesome that things can continue to move forward. And, you know, they need to. And, and we're excited for, for other new things coming up right. as well. Um, we just got a new resource called Creative Bug. Um, and that's a, a digital resource. It's, it's often described as craft, a YouTube for crafters, um, but uh, you can access thousands of arts and crafts classes for free with your library ah. card now and on a huge variety of different art and craft subjects. So knitting, quilting, painting, drawing, sketching, uh, wood burning, um, hand making, jewelry, all sorts of different things. Uh, and all of those are available for free. And in fact, um, starting in March, I'll be leading a class on uh, creative doodling where we'll get to experiment with uh, different types of papers as well as different uh, pens. And we, we very graciously received a, a grant from the uh, Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund 
to be able to make that class possible. And um, registration is closed for that one, so mm -hmm. you can't join that. But ah. um, look forward to our next classes. We, we have sure. a couple coming up in April as well uh, that are related to that. And then uh, we also uh, have uh, a library of things now. So most people, uh -huh. the, the most common association with the library, of course, is, is literature and, and books and, and things that we make available for reading. But uh, libraries are also you know, more and more becoming hubs for the community. And sure. so we are offering quite a few different things for patrons to check out, uh, outdoor and sports equipment, games, uh, kits for activities with children. Uh, we have a couple instruments. Uh, and so mm -hmm. uh, you're welcome to browse those when you come in. You'll see a, a, a big display for it across from the circulation desk out there in the, on the main floor. Excellent. Oh, how cool. So oh. a lot of those will be fun. And um, some of the games that are there are also, of course, uh, featured on our, our ongoing series that we do in partnership with New Cat and Red Dragon Gaming. Um, we have a... a, a uh, for back of a little, <laughs> there goes my brain. Um, it, we have a, an ongoing uh, TV series uh, called Don't Forget to Read the Instructions in mm -hmm. which we teach you how to play games that you've probably never heard of before, but are actually a lot of fun. Um, and, and you can see the episodes for those on, on our YouTube channel as well as New Cats. And we're filming our next one uh, next week, on Friday. Uh, let's see, last couple things I have to mention. Uh, in January, we were very pleased to have uh, author and explorer and researcher Chad Lewis okay. uh, do a virtual presentation for us. And he was very nice and we were able to record his presentation. And so if you'd like to, to view things about the bizarre history of Minnesota, um, it's available on our YouTube channel. Um, almost an, an hour of, of some great insights and, and odd facts about our state. Uh, I missed that. I've got to look at that one. That one yep. sounds great. Yeah, it was uh, a lot of fun. We had a lot okay. of people attend that one. Uh -huh. uh, but it, it, yep, it's available and you can watch it for free. So. And then uh, the very last thing is uh, we received a grant uh, graciously from our local Walmart mm -hmm. and uh, we will be getting a 3D printer for the library as well. So uh, look for news about that oh, upcoming nice. as far as services that will be offered and, and so on. So. Excellent. Excellent. Well, again, the, the world just keeps rolling no matter what. And, and, and that's amazing, you know. And it looks like we're maybe kind of turning the bend just a little bit. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We won't. <laughs> but, but that's amazing. It was, well, it was really good to meet you and to have a face yep, to go very with. Very nice to meet you, Brenda. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed the stories that, that you did over the holidays. Those were just amazing. And, I, you know, it was, it was great to be part of that. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it really was. And so I'm, I'm so glad to see those kinds of things going on. Mm -hmm. We're all smarter now with the virtual world. We're, we're, we're working on that. And I'm hoping as, as things open up a bit more that, um, you know, in addition to being the programming librarian, I'm also the, the technology services mm -hmm. librarian. I'd love to be able to start offering, you know, technology-related courses for patrons to to learn and improve their skills as well. You sign me yeah. up because it's not my forte, and um, it takes I'd practice. It takes then, practice, yeah, yeah. and it is. It's, it's where the world is, and it's where it's mm -hmm. going to be. And if we want to stay current, we have to do those things. So yeah. it's awesome. It's nice to know those those kinds of services are available in our community. So mm -hmm. again, thank you and welcome to be here. For being here. Well, I'm know, very glad to. It's been a whole long, been here a long time. Not, not too long. Actually, um, next week I'll have been here in New Ulm for a year. Okay. So, Alrighty. yeah, and uh, so got here two weeks before COVID started, and here we are still going. Here we are. Here we are. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Well, it, it, it will come to an end. It will. And I'm sure it will. So, yeah. again, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. Hope to see you again. Hope so too. All right. <laughs> Thank you.